When it comes to nutrition, whether it's a collegiate athlete coming in to the NFL, uh, it's really kind of a matter how much time do you have because I think that whether it's a professional athlete or not, I think there's so much uh, false information out there, right? So I get asked every day, right? Uh, anything from like, hey, carb carbohydrates are bad for me, sugar is bad for me, or I'm going to go gluten free because I read it on a blog, or right? my friend told me that I need to be drinking alkaline water, or uh, I'm gonna go plant-based just because I read, saw a documentary, right? Or uh, whey protein's bad for me because my mom's mailman told me. We have such, we're, we're inundated with so, so much information now. Nutrition's such, uh, there's so much false information out there because I think everyone thinks that they're a professional. Um, you know, they ate a salad one time or they lost a bunch of weight and now, now they're a nutrition professional. Registered dietitians, you know, we've been doing this, I, I went to school for seven years for this. I did uh, 1,200 practice hours of, of um, you know, internship work for this. So we're credentialed and um, it's always kind of sorting through all that stuff too. And I think a lot of times you have to meet that athlete where they're at, right? And that's part of that evaluation process I was talking about before. Some athletes will come in and they have a wealth of nutrition information, right? They either research on their own or they took some classes in school or they just know a lot about nutrition, right? And you get some athletes that might come from, from areas where they've never had an opportunity to learn about uh, nutrition at all, right? So to them, it's just explaining them what a carbohydrate or a fat and a protein are and what that does in the body. Or just like getting them to eat one less fast food meal per week and how that's going to benefit their performance. At the highest level, some athletes are still uh, eating like that, which is surprising. But um, we're talking about at the NFL, the 1% of the 1% that make it there, the elite athletes. Nutrition is, is, is hard because it's not an exact science. Right? Every individual is different. If I, I'm 6'2", 185, and if we lined up five individuals that are 6'2", 185, and put them all on the same diet, they're gonna respond differently. You have so many more components outside of nutrition that can affect your health. So you have sleep, you have stress, you have environmental factors, you have availability to food, you have all these other factors that I think um, people forget about when it comes to nutrition and health. Um, and think it's just food, but you know, learning and educating yourself on how all that affects the body and, and trying to be healthy, um, I think is really important. It's educating them and building relationships with them too. At the NFL level, I think you have to build relationships, and I'm a big relationship building person. I have to be able to trust you, and you have to be able to trust me and, and what I know um, to take into a lot of, of what we're, I'm telling you. There's a big psychology component to nutrition and the way that you fuel your body, too. Um, and so I think people forget that. So uh, I can spend a long time getting to know a guy before I actually intervene with their nutrition. Um, because I need to, right? They need to know that they can trust me and I know what I'm talking about um, before they can start to implement. Um, but again, it's on a big spectrum of guys that will do it to a T and, and want structure and their meal plan and can follow a perfect meal plan. And then you have guys that just, they need to, they need your help and at one thing or, you know, and start building off, off of that. You have to figure out what works for you. Um, an individualized approach and, and with the science emerging now between you know looking at the blood, looking at body composition, looking at your your uh, gut microbiome. I could talk forever at the microbiome because I think it's so fascinating, but I think it's the next trend of health. We see a lot of autoimmune diseases and different things that are affected directly based on your gut microbiome and it, but can, it can be influenced by a number of things, right? Stress is the number one, diet's a number of things, disease, right? Autoimmune things, but we can manipulate that. We can DNA sequence that now, right, too. Um, we're also finding more and more about nutrigenomics, taking a look at your genes and looking at what your DNA makeup says about you, right? So. Um, you might more, you might be more predisposed based on your genes to gain weight, and you could might be able to figure that out on your own, or you, it, it might be helpful to be to know that ahead of time so you can prepare for that, and, and you know in the future know that you're more conscious, you're more uh, susceptible to that, to be more conscious of that in the future.
With a third party certification like NSF, you're really uh, trusting that what's actually on the back of that label or on the label of that supplement is actually in that, that bottle. Without a third party certification or without any uh, testing, you don't actually know. And that doesn't mean that there's banned substances in there or, or anything bad, but it could mean that there's sawdust, there could be heavy metal contamination. Without that label, the NSF certification label on the front, um, you don't necessarily know what's in that product. You're just trying to trust the label, um, but we know through testing and, and third-party testing that's not always the case. We've seen a number of supplements that have been tested that actually contain anabolic steroids, things that are really bad for your, your body. Um, and we've seen athletes, professional athletes, time and time again, still getting uh, tested for drugs, uh, PDs, and they blame it on uh, a supplement that they took when there are so many preventative measures and quality supplements to prevent that from happening. Um, and NSF certification is one of the ways to, to prevent that from happening. Um, and you can rest assured knowing that it's free of banned substances and you really know what you're getting on the back of that label. So we're seeing a shift in the food industry, right? So for so long it was processed foods, cheap foods, fast foods for a long period of time. And now we see this generation, the younger generation, and also this baby boomer generation that's getting older. These are the two larger generations of that are making up our population. And so we're educating ourselves and we see, we're seeing that there's a lot of unhealthy foods out there. Um, people are being becoming overweight. People are starting to become unhealthy and they're starting to demand more. Not directly, but by, consu by consuming less of these products that we know that are bad for them. This company looked at and surveyed thousands of Americans, right? And they try to find out uh, what, what does the American consumer want in their products now? And they used even the terms, the, the, the you know, fancy terms that companies throw on the front of products, right? Natural, non-GMO, uh, USDA or organic, all these, these buzzwords that will uh, companies try to trick um, people into thinking that their product's actually healthy. And what we see now is that these, you know, the younger generation and the people that are making up the majority of the population now are demanding better nutrition. They're being more conscious and educated on, on things that are bad for them. And I guess it's one of the, the benefits of, of social media now, um, one of the positives of social media and, and internet and blogs and uh, documentaries. There's some that go too far extreme, but overall the message is coming across that Americans need to start paying attention more about what they're putting in their bodies, what they're consuming. Um, and we see it happening. They're demanding for better products. They're demanding for non-trans fats. We saw that, you know, you know, 10, 15 years ago. So now there's no trans fats. Now added sugars, you know, becoming a big thing, right? So we're, we're looking at products that now have natural sugars, no more added sugars, no more high fructose corn syrup, right? Things like that. So it's really interesting by indirectly, we're making a change to the food industry. So we're providing, you know, healthier options, healthier products, things that, um, you know, are gonna actually be healthy for the next generation to consume. It's not just about food, right? It's not just about the way that we fuel our body. We need to start thinking about other ways to be healthy. Healthy mindset, right? Are we mentally uh, taking care of our minds? Are we taking care of our sleep? We see countries outside the United States with a direct correlation from uh, sleep deprivation and obesity rates. We have the highest obesity rate, but we also have the highest level of sleep deprivation, right? When you look at countries in Europe, they have much higher levels of, of sleep, right? They're getting more rest, but they're also much lower levels of obesity. So, you know, it's it's sleep, it's stress. People don't understand like how much stress and the hormones and the body's response to that, um, that can affect health, um, can lead to weight gain. Um, so people come to me all the time like, Jordan, I, I, I'm not losing weight, I'm gaining weight. I'm, I'm trying to do, I'm eating well, I'm, I'm eating salads. I'm trying to, trying to be better, but uh, well, are you sleeping? Are you, are you drinking plenty of water? Are you stressed out? Are you taking time for yourself? Are you allowing yourself to mentally be, um, be healthy? Because um, most people put that on the back burner.